Hello, John. Hello, Barbara. So there's a tradition in Ireland of growing, or sorry, of, of cutting turf, okay? So right. a lot of people down the country, including my own family, have a bog. And basically you go, a lot of people, by the way, in Dublin don't know what turf is, okay? Just uh, that's true, but they did years ago because the yeah. turf was very plentiful and, and uh, you had, uh, there was a crowd that um, I, I, knew the, I, I knew them and they had lorries, they had lorries with turf. And so people in Dublin, especially out in Holt and suburbs like that, uh, they, they, they had turf uh, as well as coal, but they, 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 they had the turf and the coal as well. So because the, the turf was cheaper, coal was a bit dearer and it come from, from England. Mm -hmm. uh, so they had that like, and then that was delivered by, 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 by the Lake of he in Holt, by the Lake of Heatons, and there was another crowd um, in Reeds, which was a local uh, outfit. So coal and turf. Well, turf is what I'm talking about. Uh, we had, um, when we were living in Boy County or as common, we had, uh, my father must have been provided with, with somebody because I don't know how he got it, but he had a, he had a, a bog, he had a place there that he could turf, turf and we were young. And so we used to go out uh, and uh, he had one of the old style uh, 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 items, uh, slains or slams, I forget what they call them. And he cut the turf and then we were, we were able to catch it and spread it out and then later on uh, make um, little... Uh, reeks, reeks. Reeks, reeks, ah, yeah. And, uh, and, then, and then later on then, We'd have the use of a, a presume a farmer, an ass and cart and a, a, a creel. Yeah. And um, we, we'd be out in the park, but we used to have lovely lemonade and all the rest of it. Uh, it was, uh, we, we didn't mind it, and, uh, and then we'd be, the, the turf would be put into the creel. We'd probably have to make a few journeys because we had turf for the whole winter. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes, because in the winter time, it seemed to be very cold them times. So we had fire grates in every room, and when the weather was cold, it had put a fire in the in the bedroom, so that we weren't frisked to death. Mm -hmm. Because we had, uh, when we were in, in Boyle, uh, we lived in a guard house beside the barracks, and there was another guard lived in another one just beside us. That would have been a big old stone building. Correct. Yeah. And uh, in the winter time, the walls, we, we had these um, blue, blue walls, uh, it used to drip. So, I mean, I don't know how I would uh, say it would be you'd get rheumatism very quick if you were stuck to that all the time. So, mm -hmm. anyways, this is what, uh, but he put a, a, a fire in the, in the grate uh, so that we wouldn't freeze and then you'd have a hot water bottle. It'd be a china thing. Uh, because, like, you'd be saying, we're running that around the bed to try and get a bit of heat. <laughs> you'd be heavy with frizz. And uh, the windows were these sash windows and there was a bit of a wind that ought to be rattling. So we were yeah, putting yeah. papers in there to try and stop it. But no matter what you put in them, they'd pretty well rattle. And then there'd be a bit of a breeze coming through them as well. So this year you were stuck. Proper with ventilation. <laughs> yeah, pretty <of> ventilation. <laughs> and uh, so this is what we had. And we had turf, so we had turf, turf. And then we'd be bringing it in. One of the jobs that I wasn't that keen on, uh, was when we when we we done a couple we got the turf into the backyard to put it into the shed. I think we must have had to I don't know how we did it, but uh, that used to be a torsion job. I thought we'd never get to the end of the turf putting it into the into where we had the place for the turf. And then I don't know whether it had to be stacked in a certain way, but it seemed to be all day. That was one job I wasn't too keen on. I didn't mind really open the ball doing what I was doing and the mirrors and that, but the other job was a tedious sort of a job, throwing stuff in, in into the thing, and then I think the pile was in to try to hide it, but we had to throw it in from the, whatever we had, to, yeah. whatever it come in, so that was a tedious job, but then even turf was widely used in homes and that, and it's still widely used in some parts of the country that are, they're, 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 they're cutting their turf and using their turf, they're not listening, passing any remark on this crowd that's trying to interfere with the turf. They've stopped the production of turf briquettes. Uh, and guess what? We're mm -hmm. importing all the turf briquettes from uh, some of the European countries like Romania. Uh, I think uh, uh, briquettes is coming from there, so they're more expensive. So we still have the briquettes, but they're, instead of growing them ourselves and giving employment, they're coming in from that country. So uh, what's, what are they up to? Now here's the worst of all. Pete 
moss. Peat moss is used by gardeners. Mm -hmm. And my late wife Judy used to get peat moss because she was into the garden and flowers and all the rest of it, which was very good. She seemed to have green fingers. I couldn't, if I planted on to be, it would be a weed come up. Uh, but she was able to, to take cuttings and suddenly it would have a nice little thing grow. And uh, she was very good, uh, but it was uh, busy as be damned. And I used to water all these pots. It would be 20 minutes watering them. When she was gone, her commissioner, I, I had to I gave them to the cousin because uh, sure, I couldn't be watering down them lads and I wouldn't have one way to be patting them. But she did. Uh, so we had plenty of flowers, and which was very good. Uh, she had green fingers and she was excellent in that. So what I'm saying is the peat moss. Now, to stop the peat moss, mm -hmm. I have a feeling Goulding's fertilizers used to do something like that, if I'm not mistaken. But I forget where it does it anyway, maybe it was born in Mona. Now, um, a hue and cry uh, come, uh, a ship came in to Dublin in January, and the word is clueless. The truck 200 lorry loads of peat moss was delivered to those uh, people that used the peat moss, like wholesalers and uh, agricultural suppliers and that. 200 lorries. Now you can visualise the cost of that imports. Something that you could grow here, you try to be self-sufficient. Years ago, when we had a unique economic war with Britain in 1932 when Fianna Fáil came into power, or the 38th when there was the thought of the war, and then the British, uh, they had been interfering with our products uh, that we were sending over and making our allegations that something wasn't right and this wasn't right because they didn't want our products, they wanted to nearly starve us. But in 38, uh, Chamberlain uh, gave us back the ports that they had four ports, which would be a target for the Germans uh, during the war, and also uh, get, give us back, um, um, uh, 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 you know, the economic war was over, so we were able to export. As a matter of fact, we kept food on our tables over there, because because of that we were self-sufficient in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some reason or other, they called it protectionism. Uh, kind of the crowd that wants to sort of destroy the country, they use words inappropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's better to have your own industries, food industries, as much as possible. We had a lot of them, and a lot of them are gone. Mm -hmm. We had fruit and vegetables grown by farmers, and we had our own orchards and uh, strawberries and all the stuff that goes into jams. We had three or four jam manufacturers in the country, they're all gone. We were talking, we were even talking about before, John, that you had people who had, you had egg shops. Correct. Just, just, just selling eggs in Ireland. Correct. Imagine that. Uh, that's right. As a matter of fact, you had, uh, you had, you had egg, egg shops and, and it did good business because people went there, they were getting fresh eggs that were fairly sure of them. Yeah. Uh, so, all that's gone and the reason for that, uh, believe it or not, was the advent of the of the of this of the supermarkets the monopoly? Now, not so bad with supermarkets because they do buy Irish and uh, a lot of products, a lot of home produced products are are are, are with small uh, manufacturers uh, that are going to are supplying them and centra, which is good. Uh, more so supermarkets because of a wider range. Centra have a narrow range, but. A lot of Irish manufacturers are there, fortunately enough, but there's too many that's gone, including Jacobs and a whole heap of other ones, too numerous to mention, uh, because they couldn't supply the multiples that come from, that were from other jurisdictions. Um, and I won't mention them, but they're known, and they're supposed to have 90% of the goddamn business. And one of our Taoiseachs, Mr. Martin, when he was Minister of Internal Commerce, did away with the below cost grocery either. So closed all the family businesses. Yet they're going down the country looking for votes. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that um, uh, the, the business of the turf, that's another example of, it's, they're, they're kind of, uh, according to this article that I was reading about, is the truck loads come from Latvia, and Latvia is in the EU. But they're able to, to supply the stuff, and a bloody boatload of 
200 lorries taken out as peat moss out. You know, we had the best of peat moss. I think we were exporting peat moss. Mm -hmm. And here we are now importing it. So this is the sort of a government. I don't think they're, they're for the Irish people at all. I think they're for the birds. <laughs> But I think they're yeah, for the and not for the boards either. Maybe they should go back <laughs> to, on that ship that was going back to Latvia and maybe uh, put them in the hole and just send them there and let them stay there mm -hmm. and uh, see what they'll do there. If they started interfering with the with, with what people was there and there, but they just string them up. They wouldn't put up with it. We were to put up with it because we had we, we had such trouble with the, with the, with the, with the penal times and the race. We we don't have the strength of character. They wouldn't do that in France. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't do it in other countries, but they're doing it here. And they've the cheek then to come along looking for votes. They will never get a vote from John Malone or anybody belonging to him. Uh, or anybody that's listened to me and supports me. Uh, I'll tell you something. I wouldn't give them a vote to save their lives. There's about 15, there's about 10% that are pro-life in, 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 the, in, the, in, in the parliament, in the, the doll. And uh, so, I mean, boy, what's wrong with them that they're putting laws in that's actually interfering with the livelihoods of people. It's jobs people want, well-paying jobs. They don't want handouts and, and all the rest of it. They, they want a proper job. That gives a satisfaction to a man and, and enables him to be a, a good, responsible husband if he's married uh, to, his, to, his, to his family. He was known as a provider. Now some of them, the husbands and wives are working and the children are put into crashes. So there's a lot of things going on that's not good or conducive mm -hmm. to the well-being of, 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 the, of the country and the business of the peat moss is just another example of the way they're interfering with the livelihoods of Irish people. Uh, uh, they have no right to do such a thing and we're against it. Absolutely and of course um, down the country at the moment uh, turf is popular again okay people are people are thinking of cutting again this year and um, of course you can't I, I think there's a ban on selling it commercially but you can sell it to your neighbour um, but I don't think there's an overall ban on the commercial cutting of it yet, okay? Um, but the thing about the bog, and anyway, I want to go back to the bog for a second, okay? Because I've spent time in the bog as a little child, and I've spent, yes. I was, last time I was in the bog was two years ago. Um, I was with my father, and I'm going to be in the bog this summer. Okay? <laughs> no, okay? You couldn't be in a better place. It's, 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 as far as I'm concerned, it's nature at its best, and uh, I love it. And uh, I love the fact that we have the bogs and we had the bogs. It was employment given years ago uh, to people uh, in the summer, uh, part-time employment, uh, helping in the turf business. Because a lot of people, even in Boy County, was common where there was unemployment, unfortunately, because there wasn't enough manufacturing industries. Mm -hmm. uh, they, 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 they were working in board and and getting nice money. Thank you very much. And uh, maybe getting maybe tough, handy enough as well. Yeah, so the, 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 the bog is a very unique experience. It's a very unique um, place to be. The thing about the bog is, right, first of all, it's very, very quiet. Correct. Okay. And you hear the birds yes, and the do. native birds of the bog are there, right? Oh, lovely. And you'll always see the kestrels, the hawks, That's okay, right. flying overhead. I used to see them all the time. Yeah. But what they do is they hover overhead, right, okay? They do. What, and what they're doing is... The birds are, are smart, you see. What the birds do is, this, this, this is the importance, people don't realise the importance of the man who cuts turf. He, he's yes. actually protecting the birds, and I'll tell you how, right? So, what happens is, the birds, so the man cuts his turf, okay? He turns it a couple of times, and then he puts, stands, stands it into what's called That's a reek. A reek of turf, or not a reek, what's it called? It's, 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 it's um, there's a word for it. Uh, you put them in a little... In the shape of a, uh, you know, a little spot of a triangle. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Right. So you're stacking with anyway little triangles, okay? And what happens is the birds nest inside there, okay? Because the hawk isn't strong enough to pull the sods of turf out, okay? So it becomes a little kind of a, it's like a little prison exactly. for the bird that the little bird can get That's in and out, thing. okay? Yeah. Yeah. And so, but the hawk is always over. He's gliding overhead, just That's waiting right, to yeah. pass. Yeah, I thought they used to point them hawks and out, and I uh, never liked to see them hovering because somebody was going to be interfered, some bird or something was going to be interfered with them because they're they're vultures, actually. Mm. And uh, the father, when we were going down, when he was being transferred to Boy Kendrick's Common, I wasn't too keen on, on leaving where I was in Holt. 
I wanted to stay there. Mm-hmm. And um, so, um, I said, uh, well, funny enough, there's, there's eagles down there. Oh, well, eagles, because there was every incident in, in my life. And eagles, oh, well, but I said, I'd like to see the eagle on, right? I said, there was no eagles. But that's what he used that ploy. Yeah. Eagles. So, 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 and then, of course, what, what happens in the bog is you usually have three or four people with you, and you make tea and you may have your sandwiches. That's right, today. yeah. And it's so quiet, and the thing is, there's no mobile phones because you probably won't even get a signal. Okay. That's right. You okay. But it was no such thing as in my time. So. And it was just it was lonely because we used to. I don't know what way we were sat down or what we sat on. I don't think we had deck chairs on the right about whatever it was. I used to enjoy the. We used to have minerals because minerals when you were young was a little bonus them times. Mm. We used to have minerals and uh, other nice go- goodies. I don't know whether it was sandwiches or what, but whatever it was. I always had a great appetite in the bog. Yeah, it is because it's hard work, you know, and it's it's. But the thing about it, it's quite nasty to be honest with you. But it was hard work. But he was the father was tossing up these jokes, so he would have had the harder job to do. We would be catching them because we were fairly handy that way and stacking them and you know and, and footing them. I think foot 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 them. I think that was the thing you did. Footing, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. foot, foot, footing. Footing and turning. Ah, uh, that's right. So you you kind of. Uh, knew all these expressions and now that I haven't been doing that kind of thing for Ducky's years. Uh, and actually a word comes to mind John, the word gwaal, a gwaal of turf. Do you remember what that was? What was that? A gwaal, a gwaal of turf or a gwaal of sticks was when you'd pick them up and you'd carry as many as you can in your two arms. That's a gwaal. Well, that's so that, very it's, good. An old, it's an old word from, from I, I heard this as a child of the 70s and Kerry. It's a marvellous word. Yeah. See there's words now that you don't hear. And uh, a lot of people would know about it, but even I didn't. And uh, yet there's a lot of words and things that I would have grown up with and knew. And uh, so life was very, that, that, that was a golden age as far as I'm concerned. And yet the uh, crowd that's uh, doing damn all good as far as he can see, only spending money like uh, foolish uh, to look at the Children's Hospital in, in James Street. By the way, my friend from Palmerstown took an hour and a half when he, he couldn't, go, they weren't allowed to go in one entrance, so he had to go down Mount Brown, which is fairly near. Mm-hmm. Took him an hour and a half to go about half a mile. Uh, we we cover that in a different video when we're talking oh, about the bogs. Okay. But the thing is, the thing about the bog is, anyway, I just want to expand well, on I, that. I don't okay. care went into that the, far. The bog, the bog is right. Okay, one thing you'll notice about the bog, and any time I ever took photographs of people in the bog. You'll see that their eyes are closed tight because the bro- the bog is so bright. You have no trees, you see. Okay, That's right. so it's a big open plain of probably thousands of acres. Okay, and it'll blind you. You have to get used to the bog. You have to, you have to climatize to it for about two or three hours. Okay, uh, before your eyes fully open up because it's so so bright. So it's so you bright. You have to wear a hat. Yeah, it's so bright. It's so quiet. Okay, well, and the other thing I notice as well is, do you ever see bog cotton? I heard of bog cotton. Bog cotton basically is just plants that grows okay in the bog, and years ago they used to make clothes from bog cotton. Oh, there you are, you see. It's cotton that's grown. So they use nature, and like there was a lot of cures in nature too, by the way. Yeah. Because when I was young, like uh, we, we, I was wearing short trousers at least, and not just me, but everybody. Uh, I made me confirmation in short trousers, mm. and um, and so did everybody else at that age. And uh, so you'd be getting stings when you were young, you'd be out and this, that and the other, you'd be getting stings. But Doc Leaves was great at, at helping it to, uh, to be cured, or, right. you know, not to kind of be cheaper and giving you big, big lumps. Mm-hmm. Lads used to have warts on their fingers as well, them times too. I don't know what that was from. Uh, but uh, I don't see too many of them now. Uh, but we used to use the Doc Leaves because we were always getting stings. Because you we are out and uh, you be I remember we used to be looking at the that board's nests and all the rest, but you would manage to, to do it and I used to we be uh, rabbits. We used to be after rabbits and I remember getting a few small rabbits and boy once and put them in my pocket, bring them home. And uh sure about the rabbits, oh put them up out in the dog house there and then nice it'd be nice and cool there and and, and then I put something up so I so I put lettuce in for them or something. And uh and then I went out the following morning and because there was, there was no sign of the rabbits. But <laughs> obviously let them out. I, I remember just, when I was a child... How did they get out? It took for years. I never knew how they got out. Yeah. When I was a child anyway, in the bog, um, my brother was about... I was about four and my brother was six. 
And my father used to always love mustard on the ham, okay? And he'd boil the kettle and the tree was to be there, okay, learning all about the bog, okay? <laughs> mustard. Mustard, I used to hate mustard as a child. Of, uh, <laughs> sorry, okay? You would like My father would say, that's good for you now, there. Oh my God, that's disgusting. But, well, anyway, <laughs> a bee flew past, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay? And uh, my brother says to my father, how come the bee makes noise? Okay, like that. Is there an engine in the bee? You see, my father was a car dealer, okay? <laughs> right, right. Okay? So my father was a car dealer, and... My brother was convinced then, he was only six, and he said there must be an engine in the bee because the bee is making a noise like a car. Okay? <laughs> so my father said there is an engine in the bee. And my father was asking, uh, my, my, my little brother was asking him, and he said, would it, be like, would it be like a tractor engine or a car engine that's in the bee? A small version, okay? And he says, no, it'd, it'd be a, a bee's engine. Okay? <laughs> so wait till you hear. So my brother, my brother anyway, okay? seen a bee in the ground that was on his way out, he was dying, okay? And he decided to dissect the bee to find the engine. <laughs> <laughs> and he came, he came back and he says to my father, my father, he was over for about a half hour on his own on the ground and he's dissecting the bee. And he, he said to my father, he came back and he says, you said there was a, there was a bee in an engine, I took him apart and there's nothing. <laughs> oh, he so says, that's... <laughs> that's my memories of the ball. Well, that's a good one. Uh, so he was a quiz, he was a curious young fella. At he was, he wanted to point out. You believe all these things, you see. When you're young, you're, you, 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 you believe, uh, but fortunately, like you were guided in some ways uh, when I think of it, because uh, you wouldn't put astray, but you would be often told things. I mean, I was told that there was eagles there a boy. You were told there was what? E eagles. Eagles, yeah. Eagles, yeah. And I was interested in, 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 in I used to, there was, a, there was a comic called a thing called The Eagle. I was always interested in that kind of thing. And, uh, and boxers as well, Bruce Woodcock, yeah. uh, Jersey Joe Walcott and all these, I uh, uh, scrap with all these boxers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, different interests now that I don't think anybody has them kind of interest, but certainly I had them. And other ones too. And... Uh, various other things. As a matter of fact, when you were even younger, you had little cars and you'd be swapping with this one and that one and the other one. And I think one story a little told one time when, when we were living in, in Ring's End and uh, the band was going down the Irish Transport, down Bath Avenue, and all the young fellas ran and then there was a lot of little cars there and I said, of course it's clear, in a row, all the cars. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't give them back to them if I remember rightly. So it would have been rows and all the rest of it. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so it's extraordinary like what 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 you do when you're young because you 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 you're guided when you think of it when you weigh it all up. You uh. wouldn't put astray. I think young people now are put astray with the way they're they're indoctrinated and with the way that this um, education for the you know, that, that, that that's not conducive to the learning and to their development as human beings that teaching them stuff that even an adult wouldn't want to be known too much about. Absolutely. But I think well, I think what they should be doing with the bogs in Ireland, I mean the Green Party, um they have obviously their own green yeah. agenda. But the thing about it is what they should be doing with the bogs is, is they should be creating getting if you're going to save the bogs, at least bring the people out to see the bogs, okay? So they should, should be creating these little restaurants, restaurants. Little restaurants, little coffee shops in the bog, okay? Correct. And do bog walks on a Sunday, yeah. Saturday. Marvellous. Because I can tell you that a bog walk is very, very unique. Of course it is, and not alone that, very healthy. Very, very healthy. Very healthy, you're not going to get anything um, untoward in, in those places. And uh, the, 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 these great amenities that we have, uh, you don't like any party to be interfering with the with such an immunity. Absolutely. And uh, the Green Party leave a bit to be desired. Every time they get in, they're causing trouble and they're interfering with the economic development of people which are entitled to, if there's any jobs to be had, especially with something like turf and, and, and briquettes and the peat moss that they've interfered with. I'll tell you what they do need, okay, because you notice it down the country an awful lot on a wet day, you'll notice it, right? Um, if you walk through a village anywhere, say in Kerry, or any town in Ireland, right, okay, on a wet day you smell the turf. What they need is, if, born, if you're going to burn turf, they need better filtration systems on the chimneys. Some, something to, some kind of modern invention that gets the do. smoke and neutralises it. 
Yeah, well, funny enough now, when you mention that, I have to say for myself, I love the smell of turf. Well, it gives me a headache. <laughs> horses for courses. Horses for courses. Yeah, when I turn them along, I love the smell of turf. And if I go anywhere and I, I smell the turf fire, no bother, oh, God, that's low. I love that. I love the smell of turf. Yeah. Uh, you grew up with it, and sometimes it was denigrated by certain smart addicts. Yeah. But people, this is what uh, there was a father Flanagan, a famous priest from Roscommon. He was a curate in Canoodle years ago, and I think the proud, uh, we call it the landed gentry, we won't call them that, we call them bouncies, the ones that had the uh, influence, what it all for the certain church of order crowd. Mm. And uh, because he, he, he was a, a, a crowd objected and the wonder their case. Catholics were from these bogs and they were nearly going to be taken off them. Okay. And they'd farmed them for generations. That's what kept them warm in the winter. So there's, there's stories about it that we don't hear. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we ever did that in the building, but I remember that that was a famous case. Okay. Well, that was a very interesting chat about bees with engines and trucks. That's right, and... yes, yeah. So, I mean, it's sort of funny what you can remember when you're young. Yeah. And it sticks with you, and I go, <laughs> because there was engines, <laughs> and you say, it's making a noise, it must have an engine. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is, well, just before we go, um, I vaguely remember a thing called a bog lizard. That's right. Was there lizards on the bog? I now? think there was, there was something, but there were, like, there, 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 was, there was something like that always. I can't, I think it had another name, but there was. It was a tiny little thing that was looked That's like right. looked like a lizard, as far as I it remember. Did, aye, it did. What I was not too keen on was in the wells. There used to be eels in the wells. Oh, was there? Yeah, sometimes. Well, we used to, in the summertime, we'd be Ooh. going out in the boil and we'd be going out. And was late. We knew what all the, the wells were. We'd be going into the wells. Well, we'd have some kind of an old container. But you'd be bloody eel in it. You wouldn't... Uh, uh, you'd be drinking water because the weather would seem to be very summer, summer seemed to be lovely. Okay. And you'd be thirsty, so you had to the wells. Okay. And they were there, we knew where they were, you knew where everything was. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you. Bye -bye.